I have come in good faith. I am open-minded and I am ready to conduct positive, constructive talks with Secretary Baker if he shows the same intention. Uh, we would all prefer a peaceful political solution, and if one could occur before uh, midnight on the uh, 15th of January, we would be delighted. Iraq and the United States, ready to meet in Geneva. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. President Bush reminded Saddam Hussein today that he had only a week to comply with UN resolutions to get his troops out of Kuwait. Mr. Bush asked the Congress to formally commit itself to supporting whatever it takes to get the Iraqis to leave. When the Iraqi Foreign Minister, Tariq Aziz, arrived in Geneva tonight to meet with Secretary of State Baker, he said that if he heard nothing new from Mr. Baker, he would remind the U.S. that Iraq does not respond to pressure. ABC's John McQuethy is in Geneva for tomorrow's encounter. When the two men arrived in Geneva this evening, they just missed each other at the airport. Baker did not speak, Tarek Aziz did. That Iraq does not yield to pressure, but Iraq is open to genuine exchange of views about the situation in the whole region. For Baker, tomorrow's meeting may be the most challenging of his career. Aides say Baker is especially concerned that he not give the Iraqi foreign minister reason to hope that the U.S. and its coalition partners will settle for anything less than an unconditional pullout from Kuwait. To show any sign of weakness, Baker believes, could mean the difference between a peaceful settlement on U.S. terms or a bloody war. That is why Baker spent his day racing across Europe trying to paper over differences that the U.S. has with key members of the coalition. The biggest differences have been with the French who for the last week have been floating ideas for a settlement with Iraq that include meeting a major Iraqi demand, opening discussions of the Israeli-Palestinian problem. The U.S. has rejected the idea, but the French today refuse to back down. Now French officials say President Mitterrand could send his foreign minister to Baghdad if the Baker Aziz talks fail to produce a settlement. Baker tried to emphasize the positive. I think that uh, France and the United States remain uh, absolutely unified uh, in connection with, uh, with the goals that we uh, expect uh, to see obtained in this matter. The goals may be the same, but methods of reaching those goals are clearly not. Later in Germany, Baker found another country that differs with the U.S., favoring more time for sanctions. The secretary seemed to signal that in the week that remains before the January 15 deadline, he would not stand in the way of diplomatic initiatives of other coalition partners. We would all prefer a peaceful political solution, and if one could occur before uh, midnight on the uh, 15th of January, we would be delighted. So Baker, who has made his reputation as a negotiator, will now face Iraq's foreign minister without being able to do what he does best. In tomorrow's meeting, he will not be trying to cut a deal. But Baker will be delivering a message designed to convince Saddam Hussein that he better make a deal with someone and soon, or he's going to face a war with the United States. Peter? John, as you well know, much of diplomacy is about feel and feeling the moment. What's it feel like in Geneva tonight? Well, it feels like the United States is trying to come in here holding a very, very tough set of cards and that the Iraqis, at this point anyway, are trying to make an appeal. They are trying to look much more amenable to making negotiations and making deals than they have been in the weeks past. In the realm of speculation, and I grant you it is that, if Tarek Aziz says to Secretary Baker, look, I'm only here to invite you to come back and talk to my president directly, what does Mr. Baker say? Mr. Baker is probably going to say, President Bush says, no, you had many, many opportunities to invite me to Baghdad, and at this point, the United States has no interest in such a meeting. Now, give us your own gut reaction to that. Do you think you'll be unable to refuse to go? I think it's going to be very tempting if, in fact, he is invited, Peter. Okay, John McCarthy in Geneva. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you very much. If tomorrow's talks do not produce results, United Nations officials say that U.S. Secretary General Perez de Cuellar will go to Baghdad this weekend to try to open a new round of talks. As we said earlier, President Bush wants Congress to get on board to back up his policy formally and to authorize the use of force, if necessary, to force the Iraqi army out of Kuwait. It is an issue that Congress will take up later in the week. At the White House tonight, ABC's Brief Hume. Fred? 
The president, having concluded that Congress is going to vote on the issue anyway, acted today to influence the outcome. He wrote the leaders of the House and Senate requesting what would amount to a declaration of war. The letter requests a resolution, quote, stating that Congress supports the use of all necessary means to drive Iraq out of Kuwait if it won't leave. On that issue, the administration got a little help today from Les Aspen, Democratic chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, who released what he called a white paper on Gulf War prospects. What is being planned here is clearly a phased campaign. Aspen, who has been sympathetic to the Bush Gulf policy, said U.S. and allied forces would pound Iraq at length with airstrikes, using ground forces only in the final stages, thereby holding U.S. casualties as low as 500 to 1,000 dead. If uh, all else fails, uh, a choice uh, to go to war is the right one, and that the vote... Uh, first, uh, the, conflict, uh, yeah. the president today, in a message broadcast over U.S. government airwaves, was careful not to promote any hope of a diplomatic settlement growing out of tomorrow's meeting in Geneva. I didn't send Secretary Baker to Geneva to compromise or to offer concessions. This meeting offers Saddam Hussein a chance, possibly the final chance, before the UN deadline to resolve by peaceful means the crisis that he has created. The White House still has not given up hope Saddam Hussein will decide to pull out of Kuwait. Senior officials say there's no question the president will order an attack if he doesn't. The question here nobody can answer is whether Saddam believes that. Brit Hume, ABC News, the White House.